Hello and welcome to Is It Fast Live? Yes, it's the weekly show that comes to you Wednesday evening, 7 p.m. from Is It Fast HQ, where we bring together all the latest news from the world of motorsport and automotive and deliver it all to you on a small but very practical plate so that you can consume it either right now through your eyes, through your ears, or maybe later on in the week, take it out of your automotive fridge and consume at your will. It's been a very exciting week in the world of cars. And so coming up for you this evening, we have a mix of both factual information and factual information with our spin on it. First of all, we are looking at the fact that cars are going up in sales. Used cars, that is. Alfa Romeo has released a brand new car. Will it be the savior of the brand? DS has revealed a goddess of a brand new concept car. Uh, if you are a millionaire, congratulations, you've made the new Gordon Murray automotive car sell out. Rolls-Royce is giving you an all-new form of ecstasy. We talk about watches and a dog was saved thanks to a sausage. Tune into Is It Fast live every single Wednesday, 7 p.m. at GMT. You are welcome. And I am other Stu, delighted to be back on the weekly Is It Fast podcast. Now, I want to start this week, if I may, with an Is It Fast special appeal. Now, we're all living in an interesting and somewhat strange new world out there, but please remember, you're not the only people on the planet. Uh, with the better weather almost upon us, we're out and about a lot more for our loved ones and our friends. So you do not own the pavement. You are not the queen. And even if you are, make some bloody room. Uh, I know it's a lot easier to walk through me. I'm very small and easy to miss. Uh, but have I checked and the earth doesn't actually evolve around you. Don't get me wrong. Both people have to cross paths and make adjustments in space. But it allows you to do that really awkward, brilliant, uh, semi kind of half smile, eyebrow, raised tilt up head thing. Even more effective if you're wearing a mask. Uh, families uh, and uh, couples double dates uh, are, of course, the worst. No, no, no. You four people walk side by side along the pavement just a me to step into traffic it's fine don't mind me uh this applies doubles if you have a toddler on a bike um don't be an arrogant puddle drinker uh i'm sure you can also give way rant over and on that note welcome to us at fast well that was some uh deep felt hatred somewhere there i uh, feel uh, well, has come yeah. from a place that has come from a place of which i don't want to explore but hopefully the <laughs> hopefully the rest of this evening will put you in a slightly better mood, Stu, because uh, there's nothing like huh. knowledge and information to soothe the soul, I feel. Uh, I've got so. it off my chest. I'm no zen. That's fine. This is good. This is good because there's plenty of things that I'm going to go mad about. And without further ado, let's dump, ju dump. Let's jump straight into the first bit of news of the evening. It's 7 p.m. It's a Wednesday. Must be time for us at fast. We start this week with the news, uh, and it is news coming out of, um, well, f essentially, this, the, the, I wouldn't say the Office of National Statistics, but it's certainly uh, news to do with uh, everyday life to a certain degree. Um, figures have come out in the last week. Uh, to do around our buying habits within the world of the automotive world. Used car sales increased by 11.5% in 2021 as the global semiconductor shortage squeezed new car supply. If you're ordering a car from the factory at the moment, it can and is taking between four and seven months on average, which is um, slightly longer than you might want to wait. Uh, a total of 7.5 million used cars were sold in the UK last year, up from 6.7 million in 2020 but it's still 5.5% lower than the pre-pandemic five-year average. So although we're buying more and more second-hand cars, probably because it's taking a while for new cars to arrive, um, we're still not buying as many as we were before COVID hit. Uh, best-selling car, best-selling used car last year, what do you reckon? Oh, I'm going to guess the Fiesta. 
Yes, yes. For those of you watching the Fiesta, which is uh, right there on your <laughs> oh, screen. Oh, don't say that. People, <laughs> think that are, people that are listening will think I'm really clever. Oh, that's yeah, sorry, bud. Oh. Uh, yes, the Ford Fiesta was the best-selling used car of 2021 with 326,346 transactions. Uh, followed by... Now, this one isn't on the screen. So no, you this can one isn't on the screen. Have a, um, you can have a guess. Oh, something something like a Nissan or something like that. Wrong. Ah. Uh, oh, so, Vauxhall. Yeah, very close. Uh, so uh, second was the Vauxhall Corsa, 262,000. Yeah. Uh, and then it was the Volkswagen Golf bringing up the rear. Uh, third place, uh, just shy, uh, just over a quarter of a million. Still a lot of cars. Uh, so, yeah. The um the reality is it's still really really hard to get a new car delivered from the factory in what would be deemed a suitable amount of time, uh, mm. so that has led to used car sales kind of continuing to go up and drive the average price of a used car. It's I mean they were expensive last year. We talked about it on the show. Um, they're still pretty expensive now. So. Uh, y- consumer advice. You're welcome. Yeah, I'm telling you, I thought you were. Um... Oh, God, what's the guy that does the consumer show that everybody well, hates? Ma- Ma- Martin Lewis. That's the one. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was you for a second. Um, yeah, let's be honest, it's supply and demand, uh, economics, at its very most basic. Um, mm-hmm. Like everything else, it's only worth what someone's willing to pay for it. And if someone's that desperate, um, also worth saying uh, right now that demand for an electric or uh, plug-in hybrid models have reached record levels. Uh, sales up um, 119.2%. Uh, and um, 75.6%, obviously, uh, hybrid to electric um, there. Um, So, obviously, people being a lot more uh, considerate with their buying habits are also kind of seeing the future of what's not too far around the the blind bend. Um, But you do have to be that kind of special type of halfwit to want to pay more for a used car than the identical new one. But nothing really surprises me in this country anymore. In saying that... If you need the car now and the new one has a year-long waiting list, what can you do? Um, the demand for personal mobility has undoubtedly increased uh, because of the pandemic, uh, but consumers will never change. They want it all. They want it now. They want value for money. They want quality. They want future-proofing, electric, hybrid. Um, it's mm-hmm. it's a great time to be a, uh, a car salesman, <laughs> let's be honest. Whoa, is it? Stock's, stock's hard to get a hold of. Um, so... I'm quite interested to hear what people think at home. Uh, what are you in the middle of doing? Are you thinking of changing your car? Are you holding onto your car longer than you might otherwise be doing so because you can't get the car that you want or the car that you want is too expensive? Uh, I f- can talk about first-hand experience at the moment. We are in the process of changing one of our cars, which we do far too regularly, if I'm honest. Uh, we have been offered £2,500 more than we paid for it just one year ago and it was second hand a year ago we didn't buy this one new sometimes we do buy brand new cars sometimes we lease um roughly how many miles have you put on it oh not that many to be fair um Mm. something like maybe three thousand miles if that and and half of those were done in one trip to cornwall um (laughs) so uh or whatever it is uh but just from first-hand experience we are looking to to change um but the car that we want if we order it from the factory is going to take seven months to get here. Oh. Um, so we're and you are not trying... a patient man. I am not a patient man. Yeah. So we, we are looking around for something that's in stock. But that is just our own experience. I would love to hear yours. Have you sold your secondhand car recently for more than you got it for? Are you looking to purchase a secondhand car? And are you absolutely scandalized by the prices? Or are you about to order a new car, but you've been put off potentially by the weight? Uh, it is... It is something. If you need a car right now, you need a car right now. It's more than just a toy, like it is, frankly, for us or for me. It is a tool uh, mm. as much as anything else. Uh, but the news there that used car sales went up last year, uh, which is probably good news overall for the economy. I don't really get it, but I It's probably good, yeah. It is probably good uh but tell us are you in the market and how have you found it so far and now some more stuff from us at fast yay 
Uh, more stuff from Is It Fast? Uh, so this week, very exciting news from the world of Alfa Romeo. Alfa Romeo, uh, of course, if you are a fan of cars at all, you must have to have owned one in order to call yourself <laughs> an enthusiast. <laughs> Not my words, the words of Sir Jeremy Clarkson. Uh, I, of course, have owned many, many Alfa Romeos and currently own an Alfa Romeo, which makes me a genius. Uh, but the news this week that the Alfa Romeo Tonale has been unveiled. Uh, three years in the, in the waiting, uh, a year of delay in terms of showing it to us, uh, but the metamorphosis, as the Alfa Romeo company are calling it, uh, is here. It is Alfa Romeo's first step into the future. So this is a CUV, a compact utility vehicle, which of course are all the range. Uh, and if you are aware of Alfa Romeo as a brand, they are very, very good at certain things and pretty terrible at others. I'll start with the bad things so that we can finish on the positive. Uh, they're bad at selling their cars. Not a lot of Alfa Romeos get sold. Uh, in the UK last year, I think more Rolls Royces were sold oh. than Alfa Romeos. Uh, <laughs> just to put that into some context for you. Uh, they're very bad at making their cars cutting edge from an interior perspective and particularly their infotainment. Uh, and they're pretty bad at their Oh, I'm going to get savage for saying this, their dealer network as well. However, mm. what they're good at, they're good at making beautiful cars. They're good at making cars with spirit. They are good at making driver's cars. Uh, but the Tonale has been designed to bring all of those things to heel and improve it. So they have done some proper market-leading stuff. Important to remember as well that Alfa Romeo are now part of the wider Stellantis group. So they've got an awful lot of backing in a number of different ways. Uh, first of all, it is going to be Alfa Romeo's first plug-in hybrid. Brand new to Alfa Romeo. Uh, they are going to be uh, kind of platform sharing to a degree with Jeep. So the Jeep Renegade uh, has had a little bit more than little to do with this um the engine delivery basis uh, does have plug-in hybrid uh, but they have added a whole new hybrid turbo feature which is exclusive to Alfa Romeo so uh, it's not really a Jeep Renegade uh, it is two-wheel drive led through the front unless you go for the total total pimped out version which has got a 1.3 litre turbo engine at the front Ooh. and then an 80 kilowatt uh power hybrid power unit out the back which runs the back two wheels giving it 275 horsepower and a 0 to 60 time of 6.2 seconds which isn't really very alfa romeo uh, when it comes to it um but what really is interesting about this is what they've done to the interior uh they have upgraded the interior to give it an actual set of up-to-date infotainment systems uh it is sold and when you buy one of these, you get an NFT. Now, that is about as 2022 Ooh. as you can get. Um, what that does is means when you sell it on, the authenticity of that car cannot be questioned in any way, shape, or form because its mileage, its history, its service history, its purchase history are in the blockchain. So that's pretty cool. Uh, down to the fact that it's got integrated Alexa, integrated all this kind of stuff to the point where this will become a safety deposit box for your Amazon delivery. So you could, in theory, have an Amazon package delivered directly to the car, put into the boot, in the same way that you would have it delivered to one of those big safety boxy things that you find in your supermarkets and or other locations. Uh, but the most important thing for me as an Alfa Romeo fan and Alfa Romeo owner is that they are really trying to open the brand up to a brand new market. Um, and visually, I think it works. I think it's stunning. I like the return to the three, uh, the three post headlights, which is very Alfa Romeo. When Alpha moved to the Julia, and even the newer versions of the 147 and the 159, they lost that. And it was a shame, but, you know, progress is progress. But here we are, the Alfa Romeo Tonale, the beginning of a new future. That said, I've lost count of the number of times Alfa Romeo have said that, because that, <laughs> it was meant to be the Julia and the Stelvio. But... Tonale has arrived. And bonus points if anyone can tell me what Tonale actually means. 
Um, I'll be honest, I have got no idea because I got in trouble last week for my pronunciations of car models. Um, it's not pronounced toenail, um, Stu kind of <laughs> advisedly called me uh, to, to say before we came on the pod. Uh, yeah, an Alfa Romeo with a lot of electrics and digital features. What could go possibly wrong? Um, for me, I think that's absolutely stunning. But a little bit of background on this. It was meant to be launched at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, but they changed it to Tuesday. Now, there's a couple of theories on this. Uh, the video is believed to have been accidentally posted, leaked uh, online uh, by Stellantis. Um, so they moved the reveal forward. Um, but of course, the theory that makes more sense to me, uh, the marketing team at uh, Alfa Romeo realized that uh, 7 o'clock on a Wednesday is when as it fast goes on. So um, they wanted to avoid that. I mean, that would have been a little bit embarrassing for them. Um, <laughs> what we said about the marketing, I mean, like proper egg on their face um, there. Um, yes, it is that kind of small CUV SUV that's going to sit below uh, the Stelvio in the range, uh, an attempt to move into the Chelsea tractor hunter gatherer class. Um, but like you, I really like it. Uh, the proportions got great detail on it. I really like the, the rims on the car, that kind of rotary kind of phone, like the da -da 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 -da. Oh, sorry, that was a noise for the older viewers out there. Um, they look really smart. Um, I like the triple headlamps and um, the digital lines uh, and the dashboard as well for it. Infotainment looks great on the inside and it looks quite striking in the blue. Um, overall, I think this is well proportioned. They've made a, a great effort here and it looks very, very promising. Yes. I mean, I have lost count of the number of times that Alfa Romeo have said that this is going to be the, where they, they break into the mainstream. The Giulia and the Stelvio should have been should have been it. Mm. I've, <laughs> I've owned a Giulia and I own a Stelvio. And so they really, they are great cars. The interior does let it down a bit, if I'm honest. The, not the quality... Not the quality of the interior, but more the infotainment system is just really not up to the price. But it's, you know. it's always been a bit, I'm going to say boxy. It isn't user intuitive. It's not, no, yeah, there's no flow all. to it. No, or are I mean, we, I, yeah, or are we spoiled by like our phones and everything? Well, like that I don't, no, I don't think so. I think the Alfa Romeo are a premium brand, and the, the problem with a premium brand is when you buy into a premium brand, you expect everything to be premium. There's always okay. been that premium, thing. That, they're, they're like Waitrose Smart Price. I don't know what the version of wait, Waitrose Smart <laughs> Price is. But... I don't know, but I'll I can't afford that. No. But the, the, the thing with Alpha is you get people like me who buy Alpha over and over and over again because it, they drive, the way they drive, the way they feel. Frankly, I love looking back after I've parked one and go, that's my car. And cars do say a lot about someone. You know, when I show up in an, in an Alpha, they go, okay, this guy's like... He's a, he's a handy mechanic. He's a, Yeah, this guy <laughs> must know how to fix a car or two. Um, you know, it they are incredible. And I do... I am a genuine Alfista. Like, I want the brand to do well. I'd like to see more of them. If only that means that they survive... You know, and they 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 are pushing boundaries within that Stellantis group. You know, they have got there's technology in that Tonale that is not available in any other car, some of which in the world, but but most importantly within that super group that is Stellantis mm. that includes Peugeot, it includes Opel slash Vauxhall, uh, it includes Fiat. You know, all these massive brands that sell hundreds of thousands of cars, sometimes millions of cars, but Alfa Romeo are the ones that they've decided to go. Let's give this a go. And that's, you know, that's great. They're keeping this brand alive. I, I would be genuinely saddened if, if Alpha went down. So this is good news. Devil in the detail here, devil's advocate. Is it possible they're giving it to the guys with the really low sales just in case it's not brilliant? Because if they put it in something massive and it's a colossal muck up, um, that's the kind of get out of jail free. Uh, I also thought that. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, well, seven people it didn't work for, you yeah. know. Um, but the Tonale, we don't know how much it's going to cost yet. Yeah. Um, we've got, uh, you can order the launch edition in April uh, and it will be launched worldwide with variations of engine choices uh, between now and the end of the year. I'll be honest, I'm not rushing to put my order in 
but that's just because I'm not interested in getting a CUV. I've got I've got a Stelvio. I've got the Big Daddy version. Uh, I don't want anything smaller than that uh, in my Alfa Romeo, and I've had the Julia, so I'm kind of done Beautiful. with that. Before we move on, mm. yeah, did you see the uh, Tonali silhouette uh, preview photo on Twitter? Well, well, they went all um, Beatles. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Ignoring the car that was kind of draped in the background, there was an executive team responsible for its design, marketing, manufacturing, specifications, walking across this very small little zebra crossing uh, in front of it with the title Tanali Road instead of Abbey Road. Like, baby, you can drive my car over the top of me. It was so cringing with embarrassment. You've got to think the marketing guy didn't come up with this. Uh, uh, I've got no idea who yeah. thought it was a good idea. I will say uh, the whole thing was a bit cringy, but then these things usually are. Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't great. And um, they did have yeah. Valtteri Bottas and Jean-Zieu, uh Apologies, I definitely didn't pronounce that right. Uh, their two F1 stars as part of their launch video, which I did enjoy. They arrived. Yeah, they arrived in a Julia Quadrifoglio and they left in a Tonale, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, and if you caught the beginning of this segment, I said bonus points for anyone that can remember what Tonale means. It's kind oh. of a trick question. Tonale is uh, a bit is a mountain pass slash I think mountain range, uh, similar to Stelvio, to the Stelvio Pass and the Tonale Range. So they've started to name these after um, mountainous regions and areas of Italy. So there you go. That's quite nice. Well, yeah. we now have our <laughs> we now have our CUV. Someone Alpha, please give us a new Spider or something sporty. Oh mate, I'm so I'm so, nice. I'm so de- I'm so desperate for a new GTV. The last five years they've been rendering new GTV and yeah. what it would look like. And I, I, as soon as the Julia was open for orders, I ordered one. My Julia was one of the first in the country, and I loved it. And I got rid of it because I got rid of it. I didn't need to. I didn't want to. I just kind of went, ah, let's go get something different. Within ten months. I had a Stelvio. <laughs> I was like, nah, this is it. Um, so there we have it. The brand new Donale. Tell us what you think. Are you in the market for a new Alfa Romeo? Are you going to be converted from your Jeep Renegade, your Audi SQ3 slash Q3, your BMW X3? And are you going to go and get yourself a CUV Donale instead? Tell us in the comments. The question that all petrol heads love to ask. C'est rapide. Is it fast? Is schnell? <laughs> Is it fast? The question all petrol heads love to ask. And the next car that we have been shown probably will be. Uh, so this is the DSE Tense concept. Uh, we were shown this uh, in a variation of this guys a few years ago uh, 2016 uh, at the Geneva Motor Show remember that uh, that was a thing uh, but this is an evolution of that uh, full performance figures will be revealed following a few tests with the DS Formula E champions Jean-Éric Verne and Antonio Felix de Costa um, DS do you know what that stands for why they call it a DS this is it's just uh, fact, yeah I've got fact, no idea DS uh, the French word for goddess is DS. And so they oh. went, hey, let's let's stick a DS on it because it's cool. Um, so DS have been coming out with all sorts of weird and wonderful concepts uh, as Citroen have <laughs> for years and years. Um, and bits of their concept cars, obviously, like most concept cars, worm their way into the manufacturer. This looks like it's going to be a bit of a head nod towards their EV range, which, of course, most, if not all, manufacturers are headed towards in the next few years. But I think this is cracking looking. You can't. We can't talk about what it is or how it quick it moves or how much it's going to cost because we'll probably never see it in real yeah. life because it will probably never really get to real life. But as concept cars go, this is the way we want it to be, right? Oh, absolutely. I've always wondered what a car designed by the boys from Daft Punk would look like. Um, th- this is properly harder, better, stronger, faster, um, or whatever the words for that song were. Um, it's got so many influences, though. You can you can look at this from its, obviously, its concept, things like that. Uh, Nissan GTR meets uh, an Alpine A110, uh, maybe even kind of even crossbred with a BMW i8. There's a lot of kind of different elements in there. Um, it says that the cockpit is going to be designed to conceive and gather data, uh, which... Mm. 
a learning smart car. Uh, Promise Formula E steering, uh, bucket seats, uh, black leather, uh, and kind of utopia sound system inside, uh, but a real influence uh, on its sporting intent. Um, but just look at it. It's amazing, uh, especially in that kind of iridescent uh, color. It looks phenomenal. Yeah. It's funny you mentioned i8. It, I do get very, very i8 vibes from it. Mm. Um, it, it if, if they release this tomorrow, and I say this probably about lots of concept cars, if they release this tomorrow, I'd be, and I had the cash, I would be sorely tempted. It looks every part the future car. Now, obviously, it'll be an EV. It's very exciting that Formula E championship drivers are going to be giving it a bit of a, a, a spanking around probably the Paul Ricard or something else. Um, somewhere, somewhere near a Dieppe, I imagine, actually. Uh, but it is a very, very interesting thing. I love that the DS brand is being allowed to go and do what it wants to do. DS is a uh, a, a, a sub brand, if you like, or was a sub brand of Citroën, of Citroën, uh, and is now basically a bit like Cupra at Seat is going. Do you know what? Go and go and have a bit of fun. Go and go and, and DS a premium, premium brand, very much at the high end of uh, of, of the of the Citroën range, if you like. I uh, probably shouldn't call it a Citroën range because they want to be very separate. Uh, but yeah, the 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 DS. E tense. Uh, if you're watching us, tell us what you think about this. Does it look futuristic enough for you for a concept car? Uh, do we need any more concept cars in our lives? And randomly, the Geneva Motor Show. Would you like to see that come back? Because we haven't really had it recently for obvious reasons. Crying shame. Can't wait really for car shows. Been. Can't wait for uh, car shows yeah. to come back. Properly. I've got to say though, this has to be also one of the few kind of concept cars out there that semi looks ready for production, or am I dreaming? Uh, I mean, some <laughs> there's been plenty of production, plenty of concept cars that don't get a, that much of a tweak. I'd be surprised if I see that e yeah. in any way, shape, or form, to be honest. Um, but we shall wait and see. Would you like to see it come to life? Please oh. do tell us. It would. I would for yeah. sure. I think it looks cracking. You're tuned in to Is It Fast, and we're live which is why it's so bad. Uh, last week, we shared the news of the Gordon Murray Automotive T33, the T50's little brother. Uh, it was going for an absolute bargain of £1.4 million, and that's why they were all sold. They were going to make 100 of them in its uh, guise, uh, the launch guise, essentially, uh, and they're all sold out. So it just goes to show... Uh, that millionaires are alive and well, and it's good to be rich. Um, quick social commentary on the fact that they've managed to sell 100 cars at £1.4 million, plus options probably. Um, just darn, darn, darny, darn, darn. Um, I'm just going to have to really keep my eyes out on Auto Trader now, I suppose. Um, <laughs> you really have just brought this back up, so I will say Alfa Romeo Straddle again. Uh, I know <laughs> I, this. I forgot about that. <laughs> no, you, no, you have not. You've messaged me a couple of times this week about it. Um, it's great to know the influence we have on the super rich car buying market, though. Um, mm -hmm. uh, just to make you all aware that uh, is it fast? Also, give great stock tips. Um, yeah, yeah. all one hundred have gone so quickly after the global launch. A week. Um, it's amazing that they've kind of revealed a. a uh, a prototype version of this uh, but it's safe to say that development is well underway and they aim to uh, have the first car uh, with a customer by 2024 uh, that's right. a lot of bank time uh, yeah. for 100 yeah. 1.4 million isn't it it is it is not a bad shout at no. all but there you go the news that the <laughs> the news that the t33 the launch edition, which is what we're seeing here, all 100 have been sold for 1.4 million. Uh, I'm led to believe there's going to be maybe another couple of hundred in different formats. Ooh. One without a roof, um, one with uh, almost like a, 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 a Targa style. Uh, I don't know. I'm not on the list to buy this, uh, but you might get a chance to buy a T33 of sorts. But the first 100 that are like this are gone. It's done. It's done and dusted. But it does make me a bit sad that these are going to go straight into climate-controlled garages and they're possibly never going to see the light of day again. Cynical maybe, uh, but at this price and so few units, 
I kind of feel sorry for the designers and the engineers that have put so much time and effort into yeah. making what is a beautiful kind of 1960s styling with today's technology. Um, when there are so many sportier cars out there that are overcomplicated, cluttering up with design, and yet these are going to kind of sit being a bit unused when they should be kind of driven in amazing anger. <laughs> Maybe. We don't know. We You're don't prob- condone driving you- in anger. No, no, definitely not. You're probably right, though. 50% of them will probably just sit there doing nothing. The other 50% hopefully will get ragged. Um, but it is what it is, especially with cars of that ilk. Um, but uh, if you if you've got a bit of cash in the bank, you might not just be thinking about getting a £1.4 million pound T33. Um, you might also have a Rolls Royce in your garage. Now, Rolls Royce are famous for having some of the, if not the most luxurious cars in the world. But they're also famous for having this at the front of it. This, if you didn't know, is the spirit of ecstasy. And it is the mascot and the badge that sits and adorn every bonnet of a Rolls Royce since 111 years ago. Uh, so it's been around a little while. Uh, in fact, this story is brought to our attention by one of our wonderful writers at Is It Fast, Ollie. Uh, so make sure you do head to our website to catch all our articles published daily, near enough, from our wonderful contributor team. Uh, but Uh, The brand new Spirit of Ecstasy is what we are going to talk about briefly. Uh, The... (laughs) Right. And just as a caveat, you're mainly... You're probably not going to be able to tell the difference between the old one and the new one, just to be clear. But the brand new Spirit of Ecstasy uh, looks like it's going to make its debut on the Spectre, which is going to be the Rolls Royce's... It's going to be Rolls Royce's debuted debuted EV. Um, So it's going to be redesigned or has been redesigned to be more aerodynamic and drag coefficient and it's just uh, I, do you know what i just don't care and this is going to be a struggle <laughs> all right this is going to be a struggle i've had a really uh, long day this is going to be a struggle it's around 17 millimeters shorter than the existing design the <laughs> at the <laughs> sorry i'm just cracking up here. the robe what we've always thought are wings by the way are actually robes so there you go. Mm. I thought they were wings. Um, meanwhile, the mascot's stance has changed slightly to place more emphasis on speed. Now she is a true goddess of speed, braced for the wind, one leg forward, body tucked low, her eyes focused eagerly ahead, Rolls-Royce have said. Uh, mm. The company's focus on realism extended to consulting stylists on the design of the mascot's hair, clothes, posture, and expression, all of which add up to an authentically contem- contemporary aura. Give me a break. It's, <laughs> I'm sure it is all those things. I'm sure you spent good money on it, and I'm sure somebody somewhere cares. It still looks great. I I really enjoy it, but I don't care uh, overtly. The, uh, you know what? I'm putting you on mute here. Um, this really is a muttering show for the 1% elite tonight. I, I've got to say, we're, we've clearly got a new target market somewhere along the lines. Um, after 111 years, the old girl probably needs a bit of a spruce up. Um, but there are actually a lot of people getting upset about this. And for a wide range of crazy lunatic reasons, uh, some of the comments online, I thought she was going to be non-binary. Uh, she should be kneeling. Uh, and other kind of weird comments that we really, really should not be getting into. Um, it is all about the aero efficiency, as you kind of said. This made me laugh, though, that they've been able to come up with this more aerodynamic stance after 830 hours of modeling and wind tunnel testing. That seems like a heck of a lot of time and effort. Um, yeah. And God knows what costs. And it. Have you, have you seen it from above? If you go back to the start of the kind of the slide images there, looking at it from above, it actually looks like the Dodge Ram logo. Oh, I mean, it does that, a wee bit. It really does, looking at it straight on. Um, and do we really need a more aerodynamic version of this? Rolls-Royce have actually had the function to automatically retract uh, the spirit of ecstasy um, since about 2004. Mm-hmm. Um, just maybe get your chauffeur to drive a little slower. There you go. That'll, yeah. that'll get the... Yeah, yeah. I get it. I completely get it in a roundabout way, now that I've had my moan. Um, 
<laughs> the everything about Rolls Royce is about quality and perfection. Therefore, every single inch, every single millimeter of the Rolls Royce has to be given the exact same attention. Fine, I get it, but have a great time at the front of the bonnet there because I'm not bothered. Um, although, interestingly, uh, do you know how if you're buying an, a vintage Rolls Royce? say something from the 50s, 60s, 70s, or maybe even 80s, mm. do you know how to tell if it has been used as a wedding car or not, potentially? So whether you're getting a high mileage I, car? I do know this answer, and I'm going to try and politely say it as possible. You you, you check out the, the physique of the sort of actually because the wedding ribbons have potentially eroded some of her features. Is that the... Nicest yes. way to say it. That yeah, is the nicest you. way to say it. Yeah. Well done. Uh, but thank yes, you. you can. The ribbon, <laughs> the ribbon rubs down the 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 chest area, yeah. So that so that it's not so pointy. Um, oh, I don't believe basically. I actually knew that. Travis. Yeah, that is amazing. Yeah, oh. it says a lot more about you than it does about me. Um, so there you go. The spirit of ecstasy is getting a renewal. Uh, it is getting a new design and has been updated after 111 years of being at the front of uh, at the front of Rolls-Royce everywhere. It's quite an interesting bit of news, uh, but I don't care. Uh, but it's it's uh, it's been a long time since I've said that. Um but it's it's very 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 cool. We're about to talk about watches when is it fast? That's right. We have got to that time of the show where we have scoured across the internet to bring you the latest in watch wearing tittle tattle um this week it's aptly themed mm. because what's going on in the other in on the other side of the world you tell me because i don't know oh um really not been watching much of it but uh -huh. the winter olympics uh, are currently in beijing um Basically, it yeah, you can get <laughs> up at like six in the morning and watch it on the BBC. They're they're showing quite a lot of it, which I regularly do. Uh, mm. That's right. The Winter Olympics is taking place on the other side of the globe in Beijing, uh, and to celebrate some of that fact, and to po possibly push one of the lesser known sports in the United States of America, um, Horaj, the uh, time maker, peacemaker, uh, has combined themselves for the first time ever with the u.s biathlon team which is quite interesting uh, biathlon mm. is quite a major sport in europe with millions of people tuning in but in america not such a big thing and um, so they've released this exclusive timepiece uh, to basically put the u.s biathlon team on the map biathlon if you don't know is when they ski around with a gun on their back and shoot at stuff i really enjoy it um yeah but here it is so you can get all sorts of different versions of this, right? And signed versions, I believe. There's some yeah. happy people. Look how happy I am to be skiing and shooting with a timepiece specifically for me. Tell us a little bit about this timepiece, Stu. Uh, yeah, when I saw we were doing biathlon, I kind of wondered if we were getting into that hot topic, dangerous territory of transgender athletes. I mean, like, that's a breakdown service that no one's going to be able to help us recover from when we're going yeah. down that road. So moving swiftly on. Yeah, for those that don't know, uh, mainly because we are in the UK and not massively into our Winter Olympics, simply because Team DB are a bit rubbish at it. Um, the Winter Biathlon is effectively, as you said, cross-country skiing with shooting rounds in it. Like, let's make skiing a little bit more dangerous and give them a rifle. Phenomenal. Um, Horaj, um, sticking to a very kind of plain but stylish traditional Swiss design. Um I really do like the US uh, Biathlon frosted logo on the back glass, which is very stylish. Uh, could have made that look cheap or, or colored it in quite nicely, but they didn't. Uh, silver bracelet. Uh, and I really like the power reserve dial in the six o'clock position. Uh, it does give you a 65 hour kind of countdown uh, on a full charge, coming in at 2,500 Swiss francs, which is about two grand. Um, and I believe that 50% of the profits will go directly towards uh, supporting the uh, Biathlon team guys from America. Awesome. So they've, they've, done, they've done well there. It's, 
it's a little bit plain for two grands for me, especially when I, I kind of was aware of Biathlon, um, but I wouldn't necessarily kind of say, well, don't, is there anywhere to watch it outside of the every four years of the Winter Olympics? Oh, it's probably, probably on Eurosport too every now Sorry. and again. Yeah, um, probably. It's, do you know what? As a watch, I agree. It is a bit plain for the price. You know what? Um, it looks far too much like the watches like uh, like a, a nurse would have kind of dangling from her pocket to be able to yeah. check, a temp uh, check a temperature, check a pulse. That makes a bit more sense. Um, <sighs> but yeah, just take that bottom strap off and it looks far too much like that. Yeah, I am. Um, so this this is actually an existing model isn't it? But they've mm. essentially glammed it up a little bit and yeah. and, and then given it a, a special name. I actually prefer the non-biathlon model, which is, I believe, a little bit cheaper. Um, and then you're kind of talking a bit more uh, about that um, in respect of me wanting to physically buy one. Uh, but yeah, it's an interesting thing. Obviously, there's a almost a competing element to it. The Omega are, I think, the official timekeepers of the 2022 Winter Olympics. So there's all sorts of limited edition Amiga watches for that, I believe. Um, and so <laughs> everyone's got a choice of kind of Winter Olympic yeah. watches out there, which I didn't think would ever be a thing. But choice, overwhelmingly, has to be positive. Um, yeah, I I don't want one, I think no. it's fair to say. But I quite like it. I mean, aesthetically, I like it. I know what you mean. It does look a bit like a watch's uh, a nurse's pocket watch, but overall, um, I think they've done a, a nice job. You know, they've done a very simple, very stylish job. Fair play yes. to them. If you were sat at the dinner table next to someone like one of these kind of charity gala type things, and someone was wearing one, you could admire it, but there wouldn't be a great deal of jealousy about it. Yes, that's I it. think I think that's fair enough. Someone will go, "Oh, that's a nice watch," and then they'd move on. Yeah. Whereas if you owned this watch and you were wearing it and someone went, oh, that's a nice watch, you'd go, yes, it's a US bias. Uh, they're gone, yeah. mate. They're already tucking into their entree. It doesn't matter. Um, but tell us what you think the US biathlon meets Orage uh, special. Uh, it's cool, but really not for us. Would you rather wear the watch or the very tight Lycra with potential... Uh, spirit of ecstasy nipples hanging out of them uh tell us in it's too late it's live it's gone out uh tell <laughs> us in the comments uh, <laughs> uh not for me i think and not no. for you either is it no not for me um again it, it's nice if kind of i'm, I'm guessing the athletes get one each surely you'd hope, you'd hope so you'd hope so and don't quite cruel if you had to yeah Ex exactly exactly uh, but there you go and don't call me show tune into is it fast live every single wednesday 7 p.m at gmt you are welcome get that reference don't call me show oh, of course <laughs> <laughs> oh dearie dearie me um now every single week um we finish on on a bit of news that's a bit a bit different now i'll be honest the last few weeks it's been a bit odd uh, almost distressing, <laughs> if I'm honest. Especially last week. Uh, if you didn't see yeah. what we spoke, if we didn't see what we finished on last week, do head to our YouTube channel or our Facebook page, uh, and do go back and watch the show all the way through, and then get to the end uh, because it's well worth it. But this week we finish on something slightly more wholesome. Uh, I think it's fair to say, uh, and actually yeah. very, very pro pet, uh, which we know is not going on in the news so much. I won't speak too much about it, uh, just in case we end up accidentally walking into a lawsuit. Uh, but we finished this week on the news that flying technology was combined with ground pig product to save Millie. Millie is a Jack Russell cross whippet. Now, I'm a dog lover, so anything with a dog in it, I will watch, first of all. And secondly, I sometimes cringe because I don't want to watch something where the dog doesn't look great. Um, but uh, shared by the Guardian newspaper, thank you, the Guardian, um, Millie was stranded in dangerous, on dangerous mud flaps in Hampshire. Um, they couldn't get to her. She was absolutely panicking out of her mind. But the rescuers had a great idea. They got a, they got, they got a drone <laughs> with a rope on it and attached a sausage to it. I flew it over to her and went, oh, maybe the dog will follow the sausage away from the from the high the, the rising tides. And guess what? 
Dogs ain't smart most of the time, and it followed the flying sausage. Now, if that was my dog, wouldn't get near the drone, but absolutely crap his pants. But followed, <laughs> followed this sausage tied to a drone <laughs> over to oh. safety, and then was eventually rescued. What a story! Yeah, uh, absolutely fantastic. Billy Jack Russell uh, was missing from her home um, in Portsmouth as part of a four-day operation. <laughs> Uh, they were able. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't um, read it. <laughs> yeah, th- this involved police, coast guards, uh, and a pair of sausage dangling drones. It's like the A team in MacGyver meets Crufts. Uh, I just love it when a plan comes together. Uh, I was a bit disappointed it was a, a Jack Russell whippet. It would have been better if it was a Dush Hound. You know. <laughs> oh yeah. Very good. Sausage, sausage, sausage dog. You get, yeah. you get it. Yeah, oh, I'm com- I'm wasting on this podcast. Tell you, um, <laughs> as you drone on. Oh, terrible. Um, to be fair, uh, is it fast? Do have a similar thing involving producer Alex and Fab Ice Lollies, so we need to get kind of a little <laughs> bit of credit there as well. Get them to like hover in front of the editing suite, so you can actually put stuff together. <laughs> um, I actually, I've got to say, Stu, I think you could maybe use this technology with Fred because because he goes onto the sofa when you're at work. <laughs> I reckon he'd get used to it pretty quickly. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it, yeah, he would. It's but what? Do you know what? There's so much rubbish news out there. Yeah, and particularly at the moment, not to put too fun a point on it, we're not going to go into political slants either way, or or whatever. You know, there's a lot of bad news in the news. Almost to be fair, almost quite regularly and for many many years. It's nice when news like this comes out, Very where nice. the dog. Now, if you're watching, you can see the dog looks happy as heck. I mean that is a as that is a happy dog like lost for four days, and then faced with the prospect of drowning. <laughs> she was I saved mean, by a flying sausage. <laughs> saved by a flying sausage. I mean, I, if my guardian angel was a sausage, <laughs> I'd be real happy about that. Uh, I mean, that, what a way that to, must be the dog version saved. of being like stranded in the desert and seeing the the kind of the oasis with the water. Yeah, uh, yeah, oh, it's, it's got to be. But there you go. Millie saved by uh, a drone with a sausage dangling from it. Not, I believe the, the, the rescue was actually carried out by Hampshire Sauce and Rescue. Um, oh, no. Sorry, that was terrible. All right, no, no. And also, you're uh, very lucky wee dog. Extremely glad that she's safe. Uh, very innovative rescue. Great work, everyone. Well done. Yeah, well done, everybody involved, and I'm glad that yeah. Millie is home safe. There is nothing more heartwarming than a dog story. In fact, when you sent me that story, I immediately go and went and grabbed my dog. I was like, I'm so glad you're not stranded, and I don't have to buy a drone to save you, because <laughs> that would be <laughs> annoying and expensive. Uh, but there we have it. And it is, as always, on that note, that we have to end the show. Thank you oh. ever so much for watching and or listening wherever you are in the world. If you're tuned in live, thank you ever so much for taking time out of your Wednesday evening. Remember that we do go out live 7 p.m. GMT with all of our week's favorite stories from the world of automotive, motorsport, and things in between, like in this case, dogs being saved by sausages being wielded by drones. Please do follow us on your social media platform of choice to make sure that you don't miss anything that we get up to. That's it. Thank you very much for tuning in to Is It Fast once again. We will be back next Wednesday, as every Wednesday, with our live podcast. Remember to check out the website. Uh, There's always articles going on and and a wide range of topics, thanks to our fantastic team of contributors. But to finish off this week with a little bit of advice, if your mechanic cannot fix your brakes, just get them to make your horn louder. Many thanks. (laughs) Good night.